take a look at uh, advanced manufacturing, uh, what's going on right now in upstate New York. We're manufacturing the most state-of-the-art semiconductor in the world. And uh, you know, the, the power in your iPhone and your iPads right now actually surpasses the computing capacity that was in our spacecraft that took us to the moon. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? And that's, that's quite empowering. I tell you that because that's not far from here. That's maybe about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes drive from here, and we're talking about expanding up the Mohawk River Valley. And that's going to have positive, I think, span and impact right here. Uh, while the jobs themselves would be a 30 to 40 minute drive from here, you know, the idea that this would be a bedroom community for that is a real one, uh, with possibilities for expanding the tax base, uh, and also <coughs> helping with the, uh, the burden on the schools, and in fact, putting kids in, in, the, uh, in the chair. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that that's one thing we want to see go well, and that is to see the continued march uh, where New York State can be a place where we do advanced manufacturing and all the tooling industry, second order positive effects that will come throughout. The second general comment I want to tell you is that for the first time in 50 years, uh, we're seeing a growth in the agricultural sector in New York. Now, when you look at it statewide, we've actually increased the number of acreage, slightly declined in the number of farms. When you look at our district, we've not only increased acreage, we've increased the so I think it's important to recognize, and, and particularly when you look at Oswego County, uh, the possibility for hops, once uh, this was uh, the region for hops uh, throughout uh, the country. And of course, about a century ago, we had a disease that beset, and we lost that crop, and now you're seeing a renaissance of that. And I think that that is going to have some genuine uh, positive first order effects and beyond uh, for this county. And uh, when you look throughout uh, the fruit and vegetable growing, um, and you see the support from research that goes in behind that and the Cornell Cooperative Extension that's so important, the Farm Bureau that goes in behind that. Uh, then when you look at this federal farm bill that we just enacted, which I do think is gonna be good for us, it's got good investments for research, which is really important. It's got new dairy policy in it that's gonna help us to withstand some of the changing weather patterns that we've seen in 2012, you know, when we had a significant drought. Uh, our safety net program heretofore was mostly focused on the 100 bush project for milk. But the issue we were having in 12, when we had this really bad drought in our country, is the grain price doubled. So the 100 weight price couldn't even keep up with the, uh, with the cost of grain. And so it's put the farms, including, we're very proud of the farmers right here in Richfield and in Oswego County. And so that's got to be part of this. When we're talking about growth, what I always said is you've got to keep doing the things you do well. You need to continue to do well at it. And then you're looking for other ideas but if you're expanding and growing and falling back on the areas that you do well, you may only end up breaking even in the end. So realizing that we have possibilities with advanced manufacturing, we already are very proud of the agricultural sector here, and finding ways for that to flourish has got to be part, I think, of the overarching strategy. I would think that we want to continue to do that. And so uh, I think the federal bill will help us on that. And I will tell you, the Cornell Cooperative Extension is already playing a key role. You know, the dairy... Uh, points, but the dairy section of the farm bill is somewhat complex. And what Cornell is doing is they're actually putting together uh, computing programs, algorithms, that will help our farmers make those decisions on whether or not they want the basic program for dairy support or do they want to go ahead and buy up. They'll get some decision support software to help them in making that decision. And so we thank the Cornell Cooperative Extension. And you know the same goes for the conservation programs. You, you have a, um, a burgeoning program here in this county, Victoria, who leads it. You got Siegel Land Trust. I think she's off to a great start. We know that that sits at the nexus, right, of agriculture and tourism. And those are two big drivers here in Otsego County. So agritourism is something that's really important. So the conservation title is strengthened in the Farm Bill, and that's going to help farmers. We want to keep our very best farmland farming. And so, you know, if you have an opportunity to take advantage of these conservation programs and you have leadership in the county to do that, I strongly recommend that you move down that avenue as well. Now, with that as a, as a backdrop, uh, and, and again, tourism is something uh, that is very important too before I get to specifics. And, you know, we, we did a, a, you know, a small thing. I wouldn't want to overstate it, but the coin, for example, for Cooperstown is going to help. Uh, it's going to help bring some uh, revenues into the Hall of Fame, which is going to help. Uh, and in general, what we're trying to do is down in Alianza, for example, the Foothills uh, Performing Arts Center, we're very proud of that. 
And so as part of the image for Otsego County is we want to not only be business friendly, uh, but also be a place where a family can come and, and spend time and really have a, an enjoyable experience. We certainly have beautiful climbs here uh, that anyone would enjoy. So that you know, has the potential for such a great emotional experience that people will keep coming back. Let's talk about some of the specifics. Uh, so first of all, with regard to the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, where we've helped in the past is we've got programs, particularly in rural development, uh, that companies or that areas have taken uh, advantage of. So th this rural development, we've done like a food hub, supported a food hub in Sullivan County that helped with a uh, red meat processing facility. Uh, and that's, that is a general um, challenge we have throughout the National Congressional District, 11 counties, is we have farmers, but we don't have enough facilities to support, uh, in all cases, uh, those uh, beef and uh, poor chicken. Uh, so that red meat facility is helping, um, is going to help Sullivan County. That was helped by, uh, by USDA money that came together. And uh, you know, there are some folks in our area who have been successful. Uh, you know, Sandy Mathis uh, will probably know uh, some of these folks, and they're in the Hudson Valley agribusiness. And, uh, and certainly, you can you can look far and wide for anyone you want to partner with. Uh, and of course, as you look at the characteristics, someone who have been successful would, would, would certainly, I think, rise uh, among those. I can tell you that Todd Erling is somebody who's involved in the Hudson Valley agribusiness, and he has been successful. He has had applications that have gone to fruition and have been supported. So, and I'll tell you, my experience with Sandy Mathis has been strong and positive. Um, you know, Green County, for example, today has a, uh, a facility that um, is home to two to 300 people that work there that do toothpaste. Uh, GSK is there in large measure because of the initiative that Sandy took, and it was not easy, it was a tough environment, but it, that facility actually went into Durham, um, which is fairly remote. Look at some of the details. So this absolutely can be done, you know, with the right package uh, put together. So um, now, in addition to this rural development title, uh, what I want to tell you is that um, the, the farm bill can be helpful to individual farmers. Uh, I talked about the conservation program. This is really important. Sometimes there are those who think that this means that uh, we're giving up sovereignty uh, to the. Uh, higher organizations, some people have said it anyway. That's not true. That's just flat not true. Uh, so if you hear something like that, like sometimes the conservation programs get attacked by those who think that this is an infringement on our sovereignty. Uh, if you hear something like that and you want me to help on that, I can certainly come and explain it. But what we're trying to do is keep the very best farmland farming. And that helps with the profitability uh, of your local farmers. The um, Another example uh, of investments that, you know, that, that we help with is the streetscape and the infrastructure broadly defined. Because if you think about what you want to do for uh, Main Street here is get it in a real, um, some call shovel ready, but really get it into an attractive state that a company would be interested in coming here. And so there are monies for that. Uh, in some cases, it can actually come through the USDA through the communities facility section of the Farm Bill, and we have uh, experience with that, and Ridge Harris is with me today. Ridge, can you raise your hand, please? So Ridge is the guy that um, actually writes the letters of support uh, for our area. So we can um, look at either communities, facilities, or we can do it through the Department of Transportation. You may have seen some of the news stories that covered Cooperstown uh, that got a pretty sizable grant. That's going to help with their main street. That, that's, a, that's a project that we supported with a letter of uh, support as well. And um, we would be honored to do that for Rich Hill Springs if you're interested in doing that. So, you know, what it can do is it can help beautify, absolutely. It can help beautify, but when you put that together with the communities facilities, if you have issues with water and sewer, you know, that's what you can put together is, is an infrastructure package that makes Main Street more accessible and immediately usable uh, for, a, for a particular company. Trails. I understand that that may be one area where you have, uh, you have interest is, uh, is trails. Well, um, we've helped in, in the past in, in places throughout the 11 counties. Um, th there are uh, programs available to support. Um, we have one uh, particular trail that uh, goes from the Harlem Valley all the way up through into Columbia County and beyond, and there's been federal assistance to that that's helped bring that project to a 
point where it's home. It's getting close to being done. It's been going now for some time, about a decade in total. Uh, but now what it has done is it's brought a lot of folks who are interested in biking and walking up from the city. And they get off at the train station in Wasaya. And uh, you know, they're prepared, they get on their bike, and they can, they can bike all throughout the Harlem Valley. And they stop in, and they hit the uh, restaurants, the bookstores. And so what we've seen is an increase in sales tax uh, because of tourism that comes, uh, comes to the area. So you know, this is an area that I would also encourage you to take a look at. There are ways that you can make the community that much more attractive in, in a holistic sense for individuals. Because there is some great history. I actually just learned uh, before this meeting of uh, a local hero here who really made a difference in terms of human rights uh, right here in this area. And, that's, and I think that's a story that would resonate uh, and something that you might want to you need to take a look at. And if you're interested in doing that, then our office will support you. Let me say one thing as far as these ultimate decisions are concerned. It's really, it's going to be you guys. Because, um, you know, sometimes these things can be debated. You have uh, local citizens, some want to do one thing, some want to not do a thing. You know, ultimately, we don't want to get involved in deciding that. Uh, if you ask my opinion, I can tell you that one of three quarters of a million people in the district, you know, how I feel about it. But what I won't use is the power of my office. I think you should really be the ones that, that make those kind of decisions. And, wh and when you do, then uh, you know, we'll look to support you uh, in any way we can. So, uh, you know, and we've done other things too. So what I've given you to date is sort of ideas where we've been involved in writing uh, letters of support for grant applications for localities to get access to federal funding to help you um, realize your dreams. As Sandy knows, we've taken some meetings with the mayor of Omianta, and we're looking to, to help him there as well. And, and, uh, but you know, it goes beyond that. Uh, other areas where we can help is with advocacy with federal agencies. So for example, the airport in Sydney you know, is looking to expand and to have night flights uh, come into Sydney. And they were having challenges with the FAA, uh, you know, obviously one of our uh, federal agencies, and so you know, we stepped in and I think per perhaps just gave them a little bit broader perspective of how just a simple decision by allowing night flights will help the local businesses uh, get more currency, get more um, rotation in uh, their bottom line, which will then uh, open up possibilities all throughout the region, not just Otsego County, but actually Delaware and Shenango as well. So uh, that's an, uh, an example where we advocated with a local agency, just one example, uh, we do this quite often, where we'll take your facts and your perspective and we'll be uh, advocates for that and then maybe even sort of abstracting a level and just trying to show the FAA why it's in their interest to decide in a certain direction. Because if we can get in a situation where it's the win-win, I think that's, that's the best place to be. And you know, the, what helped was the, was the airport itself had taken some action show that they improved in some areas where the FAA was looking for that. So that's part of the mediation process that, that goes into place. So you know, that'd be a second general area. If we're having some roadblock as far as uh, uh, federal agencies, we can, we can help. Let me tell you a third area where sometimes this can be helpful. Is that is, if you get a, um, a business, uh, an entrepreneur, that's uh, got an idea on what they want to do, and then they start to look at the vertical task list, of everything that has to be done for them to actually get up and running, and it can fatigue a person. Just a, you know, I mean, it's really tough uh, because when you look at all the, the hurdles that have to be, uh, uh, you know, successfully negotiated, and then you've got the you've got the federal piece, you've also got the state piece, and then you've got local requirements and ordinances, and so you know, pulling that all together can be very challenging. So one of the things that we can do is we can get all the stakeholders into one room. Because what we found is sometimes you'll get different stories, and if we can get them all in one room, and we can take the vertical task list, we can actually turn it and uh, make it horizontal. Now they can get a timeline that they can actually action, and we actually have some buy-in from the agencies that are there. So you know this is, and we've done you know some of this with the senator too to help to help work this. So you know those are three different areas where uh, we think we can we can be helpful. It's, it is particularly um, facilitating that you have, I think, an aggressive posture now to go after opportunities. Uh, and so, you know, between the senator's office, um, between Sandy's work, between the, the
county legislature and the local leaders here, both uh, at the town and the village level. Um, we want to be in a receive mode of your ideas and then try to find any way we can uh, to, uh, to act actualize that. So, um, you know, with that said, uh, uh, and, and want to thank, I, we've also been helpful in terms of uh, supporting when there's federal state nexus. So one of the things that we vote on is the community development block, block grant program. And the intent of the CDBG is to get the money into the state with as few strings as possible. It, it, it wouldn't be accurate to say no strings because there are some strings. But then that money then uh, gets pooled with some state money and then you get the consolidated funding application that you hear about every year and that you guys put in for applications for. So we can be supportive there as well. We've written letters of support to help um, show with Mr. McGee and uh, Mr. Seward. You know, we, we can show the bipartisan nature of it and the nexus between federal, state, and local, and hopefully put that in a position where the, where the decision makers on the CFA will see the virtue in, uh, in supporting a, a particular project. So that's another area where we've, we've helped in the past. So with that said, I, I would, I, how do you want to do this in, in terms of us listening? I would just open it up for, for yeah. comments, questions. And see yeah, so why don't we open it up to ideas that you guys have heard, um, you know, uh, in terms of what you might want to do here in Ridgefield Springs, and you know, we can have a conversation about where uh, where we might be able to help. 